when you do that, then all of a sudden you're, you're just at a different place and, 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 and you feel your, your body's starting to feel better and you're starting to feel a lot more benefits and a whole lot less of the why, right? And, and, it, and, it, and it's good. And I've noticed that really with a lot of different things. I mean, again, you could you put it to exercise, you can put it to diet, any, any sort of habit any sort of habit that you're like you're trying to build, like at some point it becomes difficult, it gets challenging, and then you just you just want to stop, and then lots of times we just we just can't we just can't quite make it. Because let's just be honest. Most for the most part, you don't need me, you don't need other people to tell you what you should be doing. If I came to you right now, a little piece of paper, I want you to write down, what are the three things that you most need to do to improve your life? You don't, you don't need me to help you make that list. You don't, you'd be like, well, I, don't, I don't need to do this, I need to do this, and this, this. I, mean, I, 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 I know what's wrong with me. And I know the steps that I need to take in order to, to, be, to become better. It's not a question that we don't know. It's we just don't. Right? And so you don't need me to sit here and tell you what to do, even though I think about it, and it's kind of really kind of what this is, and I, and I, and I, and I, and I joke about it, right? I joke about it with, with me. It's like, it's like a sermon is like 25 minutes of, of hype and then five minutes of you should read the Bible more, right? I mean, and therefore, now that we talked about this, you should pray and read the Bible and go to church and be in a small group. Let's pray, right? And we, 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 we know, we, we know, whether we're talking about my spiritual life, I, I know the things that I need to do. My, 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 my physical life, I, I know the things that I need to do. I, I, I know them, but I just can't. Or I can't for very long. And again, with, the, with, with, with this awesome group of people, these early followers of Jesus, we see them building a movement. And it was not something, it was not a flash in the pan. It was not just something that they did for a little bit. They kept going. So what is it going to take for us? What is it going to take for us to stop being the kind of people that at the moment that we need it the most, we stop doing the things that we need to do? Thankfully, today's message is not about diet and exercise. We're going to be talking about um, our spiritual life. But again, it's, it's the same kind of thing. When... When the challenges in our life hit us the hardest are the moments we're less likely to do the things that we need to do to stay connected with God and to grow. So we're going to be looking at that in Acts chapter 2 today, but just kind of catch us up. Last week, we are in Acts chapter 1, and we're looking at this characteristic of, this, of the early church, and Jesus kind of gave them this commission. He says, hey... You know, you're going to receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you're going to be my witnesses here in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and ultimately to the ends of the earth. And so he called them to be witnesses. What we talked about last week is that that's what we will do. We will be witnesses. We will be people who take God's hope and his message um, to a world that needs it. And what he was trying to do with them, he was trying to get them to switch a mentality, a mentality that they had. They've been following Jesus around and really had a mentality of, Man, me staying connected to Jesus is really good for me. God does things for me. I, I, I get things from this. And they have a mentality of what they get. Like, I get stuff from my relationship with God. And Jesus is trying to break them of that. Yeah, I mean, I, God is going to continue to give to you, but your life now needs to be about taking what God gives you and giving it away to other people who need it. So he's trying to break a self-focused mentality in them. But in order for them to do that, he didn't say, hey, now just go do some stuff. He told them to wait, to wait in Jerusalem because you needed power to be able to do this and this is going to come from the Holy Spirit. And so in Acts chapter 2, we have this story of them doing what Jesus asked them to. They're going to just wait around in Jerusalem and then the Holy Spirit is going to come and the Holy Spirit is, is God Himself, His presence that comes to live inside you. And so they're waiting there for a few days and they're praying and they're expecting God to do this thing that He promised. And then it happens, and it's this really powerful moment. It happens at Pentecost, and, um, and, and it's, this, it's this powerful moment. It's described as like, like, like tongues of fire came on all of them. And what began to happen was, is they began to speak in languages that they didn't know. 
And so this was kind of a busy time for Jerusalem. It was this festival and all these Jewish people from all over. Jesus was and, and what happened to him with his death on the cross and said, and you guys need to believe. So the power of the Holy Spirit comes on him. He preaches this powerful sermon. It says in that moment, 3,000 people gave their life to Jesus. And so this, this movement of following Jesus that started with just a couple of dozen people in just one moment is now over 3,000 people, which is incredible. And, and here's the thing I like. I feel like I just kind of brush by and super speed some really awesome, there's a couple of really awesome stories in Acts chapter 2, kind of the way that we do teaching here at the Grove. is like we like to cover a lot of different books of the Bible over the course. We'll do this, some sort of raw, and he's like, I don't think I can do that. That's okay. It's okay because it is something that God said He is going to do through you, through His Holy Spirit. And so now here we are in Acts chapter 2, verse 42. We've got these 3,000 brand new followers of Jesus. And the first thing that even could remotely be called a Christian church, property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread and commitment. They had this passion. They, 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 they committed themselves fully to all of these things that God had called them to do. To say that I'm going to be devoted to do and become who it is that God has called me to be. Things in this passage that Luke is describing that they're devoted to. Verse I need more of that. And it says that they were devoted to prayer, that I'm going to take the things that I'm learning and I'm going to stay connected with God personally. And, 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 and I don't want to, I don't know if I can overstate it. I want to describe spiritual growth to you. It's the fuel for your life. As you're thinking about who you could be and what your life could be like and, and the obstacles that you could overcome and the impact that God could have and the character that you could have and the failures that you could overcome and the sin in your life that you could get rid of and just everything, think about who I could be. The fuel that's going to get you there is your spiritual growth. And you have to say, I'm going to be devoted to that. It's my fuel. But here's the thing that happens to us. And let's just be honest. What happens to us is we're just like, ah, you know, you know, life's, life gets real busy sometimes. It's just, just like busy. I got a lot going on. And we got, we got, we, and it's just like, it's hard. Monday through Friday is hard. I'm trying to get ready for school, or I'm trying to get ready for work, or I'm trying to get, re- trying to get me ready for work, I'm trying to get my kids ready for school. There's just a lot going on. And then bu- and just, and the evenings are real busy. And then Saturday, it seems like there's always something. It seems like the only window of time I have is Sunday morning. And I, I just, life's too hard. I think I'm just, we're just, we're just going to sleep in today as a family. We just, we just got a lot, a lot, a lot going on. And you can get away with that here at the Grove. You can, because we're, as churches go, we're real nice. We're just a real nice group of people. We're not going to be like, oh, suddenly, like, you, you don't come the next two weeks, and suddenly you're getting, like, a, a sternly worded letter from me, right? I'm not going to copy, like, your membership covenant that you sign, like, with passages highlighted and sent into you. It's like, no passive-aggressive anything. It's like, it's like, we're nice about it. We're not trying to guilt anybody to anything. But at the same time, the thing that we do when things get stressful, when things get overwhelming, when I get tired, I give up the thing that is actually the fuel to help me be an overcomer of all of what life is doing to me right now. I think I mentioned this a few weeks ago. This happens in my home all the time where suddenly the, the ladies in my life, the, my, 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 my wife, my daughters, everybody's getting a little bit of cranky. I'm like, what's wrong? And it's like, oh, I got so busy today, I didn't eat. Which as a dude, I don't know if there are dudes that do this, but as a dude, that doesn't make any sense to me. It's like, that's like top priority. What are we even talking about here? How do you get so busy you don't eat? I can't be like, belly hurt, hurt, hungry, hungry, eat food now. I mean, like, how do you get so... So not only does it not make sense to me, it's actually not, it's not good, right? Like, my life is busy. I need energy. I need to put the energy 
and it gives me the energy to do it. But we do this. We do this with sleep. We do this with just emotional and personal rest. The things that actually can fuel us through life are the things that we ditch when things get too busy. And so we're going to have to make a commitment to that. that that's not what I, we, we, we can't do that. Uh, we're going to have to make a commitment individually and collectively to say that I want to be devoted. I'm going to be devoted to spiritual growth. I need to hear God's word communicated to me in a relevant way that will help me be who God has called me to be. I need to take the things that I'm learning both on Sundays and in, in, in any small groups that I'm a part of, and I want to take that into my personal relationship with God as I'm reading the Bible and I'm praying, and I'm going to be committed, I'm going to be devoted to this idea that my life needs to be about personal spiritual growth. Because the obstacles are coming, the stress is coming, and you cannot give up the thing that is designed to fuel you through life. So they devoted themselves, verse 42, they devoted themselves to the teaching, to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, to prayer. Now it just kind of describes them being together. They were, they were filled with awe. They see what the apostles were doing. They were together. They shared everything in common. Every day they continued to meet together in temple courts. They broke bread in their homes. They ate together with glad and sincere hearts. It describes them in the, having these relationships. It's like they were just together all the time. They were eating together, learning together, living life together, meeting each other's needs. They had this, uh, they, they just had these relationships. It's described as, as fellowship, this kind of connectedness that they had with each other. So they were devoted to their personal spiritual growth, but they were uh, also devoted to, this is a phrase that we use around here, to authentic community. That I'm, we're going to be devoted to authentic community. This idea that I need in my life relationships. I need people to help me. I need people to encourage me, to be alongside me. If God has called me to do something, to be something, to overcome something, if this is what God has called me to, I, I cannot do it alone. I just, I just, I just can't. And so they, they were eating together, helping meet each other's physical needs. If anybody needed something, they were taking care of it. And they were together a lot. It says that they were doing this every day. Now, the way that our lives work, the way that our culture works, our society works, it would seem like that that level of togetherness is almost impossible, which is fine. You know, we, we, we live in a different world than what they lived in. And it seems like that the way that our world works, that the only way that something like this is going to happen for the most part is if we put it on the schedule. And what I'm telling you is, you need to put this on the schedule. I need to put it on the schedule that I'm going to intentionally carve out time in my life every week where I'm going to be around people who can encourage me to be the person that God has called me to be. More than just friends, more than just buddies, but the people in my life, we're going to meet together with the purpose of um, we're going to help encourage each other in our personal relationships with God and encourage each other as we walk through life. Now, I've been a pastor for a long time now. I've heard a lot of different people say this. I'm about to say something, and some of you probably have said this to me. And it's okay that you said this to me, and it's okay that you may think that you're unique. You may think that when you said it to me, you were the first person to say it to me, when in fact you were the first person to say it to me. But, I mean, I, I, I hear this all the time. Like, man, I just, I, I, know, I know I'm supposed to get into a small group. I know, I know, I know small group's important. And like, oh, I mean, just, and you've been around long enough? You can just, you can just smell it. You can, just, you can smell what's coming. Comma? but, I know it's important, but, and then they give all these lists, all these reasons, and they think all these reasons why they can't be in a small group right now are good. Busy, stress, overwhelmed, you know, I just, I just got a lot, I just, we just got a lot going on, and you just don't understand. And, and, they, and they give this list, and what they think this list is they're giving me is all these good reasons why they can't be in a small group. And all I hear is a commercial for small groups. 
They're like, okay, I'm going to go get a camera, and I'm going to record you saying all these things, and then I'm going to put a tagline at the end that says, here's why I need to be a small group. We're going to show it on Sunday morning. And it's funny, people always think they're going to tell me something I don't know. Like, that's kind of the advantage of kind of being one of the older people at the Grove. It's like, oh, man, we've got two teenagers right now, man. You don't know what that's like. Like, "Mm, yeah, I don't know what that's like. Oh, man, kids are just in that season right now. It's like we got something going on every night. They got all these activities. Man, you just don't know what that's like. like, No, man, I don't. I've never had kids before. I don't even know. How do you even? uh, We've got, we've just, we've just got, we've got small, we've got these small babies and and life's too crazy. Like, that's the best time. Somebody else would love to hold your baby and you just go to small group, you throw them the baby. (laughs) Hand them the baby. You hand them the baby, right? You just, you come up with all of these reasons. Like the, somehow the season of your life or the chaos or the pace of your life is preventing you from doing the thing that will get you through it. I don't know how I would have gotten through all of those seasons. The seasons with the, the, all of the diapers. The seasons with the preschoolers who just wouldn't stop back-talking you. The elementary kids and all of their, their activities and the things and then the teenagers with the, with the talking and the, just the teenagering. And, and, and now we're in the season, now we have two college students. I don't know how I would have gone through any of those without people who are walking through that with me to be able to encourage us and to help us walk through it. And here's the thing that I know. You may not think that I know this. You may not think that I live this. You may think that I'm just the equivalent of a cartoon character who is not a normal person who lives a normal life. But I assure you, there are many times I have wanted to quit. Quit what? Yes. All of it. I want to quit all of it. I just, I just can't with any of it anymore. I'm done. I can't. I remember specifically when I first got married and just completely overwhelmed with being an adult and, 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 and being newly married and with this new job. And I just remember being completely overwhelmed. I remember when we went to seminary and, and um, just a whole lot of chaotic things happened in our life. I remember when we got fired 15 years ago from this job in St. Louis. I remember so many seasons where I just, I just, I just couldn't. And, and, I was, and in my mind and my heart, I was done. And every one of those seasons has someone's name next to it. That without this person at this time, and this person at this time, and this person at this time, I never would have made it. I understand the desire. I understand this thing that you have that says, when life gets its most difficult, I want to just hide in a hole. I understand. But that's a little bit like being hungry and not eating, being tired and not sleeping. It is at those moments that you most need each other. And we need to make it a commitment a passionate commitment, a devotion. I'm going to be devoted to spiritual growth. I'm going to come and be a part of this where I can hear God's Word. I'm going to learn and connect with God personally through the Word and prayer. I'm going to get into some sort of small group where I can be encouraged and carried through life And no matter what my excuses are, I mean, some people in the past hurt me, so I don't want to be in a small group. Past hurts, that's why you should be in a small group. Well, I'm tired and I'm overwhelmed. That's why you need to be a small group. All of these things, you need this. You need these people. And if you make this commitment to be devoted to growing spiritually, to authentic community, what's going to happen? Here's what it says at the end. So they were praising God and enjoying the favor of everybody. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. So what happened? What happened? people saw this and they saw these people who suddenly wait how is it that you have the energy to live life how is it that you're overcoming all that how and they observed their devotion to their spiritual growth their commitment to God they see the devotion that they have to these authentic close 
relationships where they're meeting each other's needs. And it says they were so overwhelmingly attractive. He says, it's like, it's just like, it seemed like, it seemed like everybody liked them and every day more people were coming. So we want to be devoted to spiritual growth, to authentic community, and to sharing God's love with those who need it. That's what we're going to be devoted to. That I'm going to take what God has given me and give it to them. We want to talk about what a world is craving for. Do you believe, do you really, do you believe that it is possible to live life in such a way that no matter what obstacle gets thrown at you, you can be carried through it and you can actually survive? You can do better than survive, you can thrive. Do you believe that? And if you saw it somewhere, would you run to it? You don't have to try very hard to find someone in your life who would love to see what it looked like to see someone with a vibrant relationship and connection with God with real friends that are carrying them through the best and the worst parts of life and thriving in life. You don't have to, you don't have to work hard to find somebody who needs that. They're everywhere. And the world is desperately looking for it and they're wanting to find it in you. And this is how we, this is how we can be the foundation of a movement. We can be a foundation of a movement by making a decision. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm just going to be devoted. I'm going to make a commitment. I'm not going to throw away the things that I know are important to me just because things get a little bit difficult, just because I get a little bit tired, just because things get a little bit more chaotic. And if anything, when things get that way, I'm going to ramp it up. And not only will God do something amazing in your heart, not only will He do something amazing in this group, not only will He do something amazing in this church, but the Lord will be constantly adding every day the number of people who are being saved. Because that's what the world is looking for. And so, again, as with most things, it's relatively easy to talk about. It's a little more challenging. I mean, what, how, how do I, how, do, how, well, how what do I do? I think it starts kind of where we started with recognizing that I need to be aware and connected to the power of the Holy Spirit, of God's presence inside me. And I'm just going to make a decision to surround myself with the kind of people that we can make and say, hey, what, what if we were just all devoted together? What if we all just worked on this together? And so, as I foreshadowed and prophesied, not 15 minutes ago, we end up with the same application points we do every time. You should read the Bible more, you should pray, and you should get in a small group. It's the fuel. It's the fuel that's going to get us through life, and we need to be devoted to that. And if our church is going to do that, it's going to be because hundreds of people today made an individual commitment to say that I'm going to the world. Let's pray. God, I thank you for this group of people. God, these early followers of you, this first brand new church. God, I thank you for the example that they are and that God, though they lived a very different life than we live, they had the same needs we do. And God, you offer the same fuel and hope to us that you did to them. And so, God, I pray that you would just help us be devoted. We just make a commitment to a commitment to be committed to growing personally, to growing spiritually, to connecting with each other on Sundays, from hearing from your word. We be committed to being in these small groups of committed friends to help each other grow spiritually. And that, God, that you would use that to take hope and life to a world that needs it.